is up everybody and your heart here with more flowey is not a good life coach and today we are going to be reading chapter 6a palette cleanser now this one is supposedly supposed to be a long chapter but i do not mind this will be fun and dandy and beautiful so i'm gonna be real up close with the mic this time because all the other audio is so quiet and i don't know why Maybe I should start recording my audio on Audacity and then transferring it. I don't know. I'll just think about it. But right now, we're just going to be leaving. reading. Flowey is not a good life coach. Right. This chapter seems pretty long. Papyrus enjoyed folding laundry. It was one of his second favorite chores. It was one of his second favorite chore. Something about starting with a basket of chaos and ending up with neat stacks of sordid clothing was satisfying on a fundamental level. He'd been catching on the laundry since he'd gotten up. He hadn't slept much, but that was just as well considering how much there was to do. Nice, mindless chores. When the, when the silence got to him, he turned on the TV for some background noise, keeping the volume low enough not to wake his brother. Metaton's morning show was on. The boxy robot was chatting ablimedly at one of his guests over coffee that Metaton, lacking a mouth, couldn't drink. Papyrus wasn't paying much attention to their conversation. He just let the soft chatter wash over him as he kept folding, trying not to think. He winced when he made a careless reach for an unpaired sock. Flay had healed him before letting him go last night, but his arm was tender and would be for days. He took a couple of minutes to remind himself that he was safe in his home to convince him that he was okay. Movement upstairs caught his attention, and he looked to find his brother leaning against the r railing, watching him. That was two days in a row he was up early. What Was I too loud? <laughs> Papyrus. <clears throat> was I too loud? Papyrus said, reaching for the remote to dial the volume on the TV down farther. Nah, Sand said. I woke up, and I could see my floor. Thought we got robbed. <laughs> Laundry bandits, Papyrus said. Not on my watch. You left your door unlocked, so... Sans chuckled and shambled down the stairs. You know, you don't have to do that, bro. He said, nodding at the basket. Papyrus shrugged. I don't mind. He turned his attention back to his folding. There's coffee on the counter. Y you'll have to warm it up. He felt Sans sit down at the other end of the couch. Papyrus was aware that his brother was staring at him, but he, was not go but he wasn't going to say anything. Not after yesterday. He didn't want to know what other vul vulnerabilities he'd sh shed if he snapped again. So, Sans said after a long, awkward silence, and that was all it took. One second Papyrus is fine, the next he quietly sort of caved in on himself. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sans <her> scooted close. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> oh, shit, Sans hurriedly scooted closer, putting a, ten a tentative arm around Papyrus' shoulders. Um, I I'm sorry, Papyrus said between sobs. I, I shouldn't have said that. Anything I said. I I'm sorry. He hated crying. It was embarrassing and becoming, and the action itself was bringing up fresh trauma that he was still in the middle of pushing down and burying. Ugh, and he had the hip hiccups again. Then Sans had to go and make it worse by not even teasing him about it. Bro, it's okay, Sans said, sounding close to tears himself. It's okay. Deep breaths. He gestured to his undershirt Papyrus had been folding, that that he was now using to dab at his eye sockets. You want me to get you some tissues or, or not, he said. I mean, it's still cleaner than it started out, right? It, it's a net gain. It took what felt like hours for Papyrus to pull himself together. Sans sat with him the entire time, not saying anything, rubbing circles into Papyrus' back. Eventually, and by degrees, he was able to calm down, taking deep, bre deep shuddering breaths at that served no practical purpose beyond forcing the tightness around his chest. Finally, the storm passed, and he was left wrung out and empty. Feel better? Sans tried for what Papyrus assumed was a goofy smile and ended up at somewhat a, a middle of a Grimmant's territory. He nodded. He didn't trust himself to talk quite yet, in case he'd set himself off again. Sans got up to 
go get that cup of coffee, and Papyrus picked where he picked up where he'd left off on the laundry. He set Sans's shirt aside. He'd have to rewash it. Sans set his mug on the end table and settled down cross-legged on the floor. He matched socks for a few minutes in silence. Y you know I'm always here, right? He said finally. But if you need to back off and but if you need me to back off and give you some space for a while, that's fine too. Papyrus sighed. He wanted nothing more than to tell his brother everything, even though there was nothing Sans could do it, about any of it. It would be easier to bear, he thought, if only someone else knew what was happening to him. Plowy's threat from the first night, and always at the back of his mind, however, he couldn't slip up. He had to be strong on his own, or his br for his brother's stake, for Undine's, and for everyone's. Sans kept talking, filling the silence. Someone... <sighs> Someone I talk to now, and then says that, uh, people can get depressed after something really good happens to them. He said, like, sudden success can actually make them feel kind of lost. Lost. Like, they don't know what comes next. He shrugged. I don't know if she's right or not. Sounds kind of backward. That must be it, Papyrus said. It sounded backward to him, too, but any ready explanation would do it if it meant Sans would let the matter drop. Sam's hummed thoughtfully. He s they sat there for a few more minutes, until he coughed lightly. So, uh, not trying to freak you out. Don't s so don't cart me off to the doctor or anything. But have you ever just- he gestured, trying to fish the word right out of the air. Lost a few seconds, like world skips, like a scratch CD. Papyrus looked at him. Last night, when Flowey had barely missed him with the attack, for a split second, he pushed himself up, and it had felt like it, he chalked it up to standing up too fast. But it wasn't dizziness, was it? What was it, then? Sand shrugged. It happens to me sometimes. It happened last night. In fact, uh, I don't know, around 11? He gave Papyrus a searching look. Maybe he stood up too fast. Papyrus didn't know what Sands was on about, or what he the stuttering feeling had been, or why they both felt it, but he knew no good would come to, to admitting to his brother that he'd noticed it too. Sen stared at him for a second longer, frowning, and dropped his gaze to the socks in his lap. Yeah, must be it. He picked up a single yellow sock. Man, how come there's always one with no mate? Tension left Papyrus's body that he that he hadn't realized was even there. Sand stood up. Sand stood up, giving up on finding matches for the last few socks and walking over to take a swig of his mug. He pulled a face. Ah, he said. How many times can you microwave coffee before it gets too gross to drink? Papyrus shrugged. They both jumped at the sudden knock on the door. Two snowdrakes in an ice cap, some of the teenagers that liked to play survivalist out in the forest, were crowded together on the front step. Can we help you? Papyrus frowned. Is there an emergency? No, the older looking snowdrake said. We found something really freaky in the woods you need to see. The bottom dropped out of Papyrus's figurative st stomach. Sands joined him in the doorway, shooting him a concerned glance. Then he turned his attention to the youths outside. Ah, oh, you mean we gotta do actual work today? He whined. This seems to soothe the teens for somewhat, but it did no nothing for Papyrus. <laughs> But did nothing for Papyrus's nerves. He was halfway out the door before remembering that he's still in his pajamas. Ugh, he said, give us ten minutes. <coughs> oh dear. Whoa, Sans said. Papyrus worked very hard to look as though he were sitting he was seeing this hilltop for the first time. Yeah, the older snowdrake said. The woods west of town are getting a little crowded, so we came this way looking for a new hangout. She fluffed up her feathers. And we found this hill just tore to, tore up to hell. Language, Papyrus Papyrus scolded. He couldn't, but he couldn't put put much feeling behind it. So, like the ice ice caps book, what is it? Papyrus frowned. Hard to say, but you should definitely stay clear of this area until we find out. Tell your friends to do the same. The trio muttered in their assent. A matter of days ago, they would have blown him off, but the armor conveyed authority. That actually annoyed him. He was still the same person with the same judgment. Why was he worth listening to now? Just because he was lugging around a bunch of uncomfortable metal and had a different title? The teens milled around 
talking amongst themselves while Papyrus and Sans investigated. I'm at a loss, bro, Sans said, towing a chunk of the permafrost the side of his head. It came loose and rolled away down the hill. Some kind of fight? Papyrus gritted his teeth. It's impossible to make out any tracks. If so, partially because he'd been greedily scuffing up any hint of his own footprints while he was looking around. <laughs> Sans shrugged. I can't imagine any kids that would goof off out here would be able to do this kind of damage unless, who said, rubbing, it, rubbing his chin, unless they're holding some kind of club for organized fighting. A fight club, if you will. Papyrus frowned. Really? Hey! Sa Sans shot out his teens. Are you guys narking on a fight club? There's rules against that. The trio looked at, at one another, then at Sans. What? Papyrus waved them off. Bah! Never mind. He grimmed at Papyrus. Fight club theory goes in the maybe pile, he said. As far as the fake explanations went, Papyrus would prefer something more plausible. It could have been a stalkamate, do you think? He peered up at the ceiling, though it was too far away to, and dark to make out. You mean a stagatile? God, these huge words! You mean a stalate? Stalacite. Stalacite, bro! Papyrus show glancing sidelong at his brother. What does the difference make? Papyrus drew a cone shape in the air with his finger. The ones that hang down are stalgolites. The ones that sit on the ground are stalgamites. I don't fucking know. God. Stal- Stalact- Ties. Stalagmites. Well, whatever, Papyrus snapped. Relieved beyond- words that they were having a normal exchange. Do you think it was one of the hanging down ones then? <laughs> could be, I guess, Sans said. Falling up from that high up could probably make a big mess of whatever it landed on, he frowned. Shouldn't there be pieces laying around? That was a good point. Papyrus had hoped Sand would be bored enough by now to accept the explanation and leave. But he was actually thinking this seriously. The one time Papyrus didn't want him to. Well, he said, at least it was better than your club for fighting idea which is still on the maybe pile lest we forget sans said papyrus got maybe your maybe pile sans gave up gave the hilltop another look around you know what we could do he said we could get dogarimi and dogrisa out here to do some sniffing they should be coming on duty soon right that's papyrus said struggling to keep his voice level a really Good idea, Sans. He wanted to scream. Specifically, he wanted to scream. Sans, for the love of God, just lose interest already. Or we all are going to die in ways that would likely be very unpleasant. I would spend my final moments feeling incredibly awful for letting this happen. But he couldn't do that. Because of the aforementioned unpleasant death issue. The absolute last people he needed to he needed here were... Mr. and Mrs. smell everything really well. This must have been some kind of chromatic battle-ash backlash for all the lying and otherwise dishonorable behavior he'd been perpetrating lightly. Suddenly, his brother was completely sentry. Was a complete sentry, and it was all his fault. This was a disaster. Yeah, Sansa. We're going. We're going all the way back to town, though. I say we break for lunch. I miss breakfast, and I'm getting a little hungry. He snapped and pointed a finger at Papyrus. That's hungry, angry. It's not even a pun. That's just stupid, made-up word. I think the results speak for themselves. Papyrus brought a secret weapon when he and Sans returned to the hilltop with the dog couple in tow. He'd hoped to beat everyone else there, but the dogs moved surprisingly fast for monsters whose legs didn't lend themselves very well to by paddleism these words Dogarimi and Dogarisa got to work once they once the group crested on a hill and Papyrus's heart sank. He'd never been able to figure out any kind of logic to the way the dog couple worked. He he studied them now to keep himself from crying, but no new information revealed itself. They just ran around every which way, occasionally colliding with each other and generally looking like a pair of 
buffoons. After several minutes of nonsense, they shot up to Pyrus's sand. Since Dogger, Dog Amy snapped off a quick salute. We have findings to report, sir. Yes, go on, Papyrus said with the opposite of pleasure. Dog, Dog Risa clicked her heels together. Sir, a planetary sweep of the area put six principal scents on the scene. Firstly, she said, you. She pointed at the accusing posture of Papyrus. Papyrus jumped. I, he stammered. And you, Dog Risa continued pointing at stands. Papyrus blinked. He shut his mouth. Also, Dog Amy said, two snorjicks, female, aged 15... Female, aged 15 and 17. One ice cap, male, aged 15. Also of interest, he said, leaning in. Ice cap had recently eaten a peanut butter sandwich. Dogger Amy nodded sullenly. Yes, and we both have a serious peanut butter Jones. Sans chuckled. Me too, actually. It is spreading, Dogger Risa said. I see what you did there, Sans said. And I approve, he looked at Papyrus. Well, this is kind of a dead end, huh? Looks that way, Papyrus said. He was really going to cry at this rate. His heart couldn't take the emotional whiplash that was being put through today. That had been too close. Dog Amy held a paw up for attention. Not necessary, gentlemen, he said. As we said before, those are the results of our primary sweep. Yes, Dog Risa said. With more time, we can accurately ar assess smells days or weeks old. Well, get to it then, Sans said, while Papyrus had minor entry. And years ago, work your magic. It's not magic, Sans, Dog Amy said. It's merely a skill honed through years of. There was a small, sharp crack of ice against the frozen ground. Two seconds later, the smell of peppermint filled the air. The dogs howled. <laughs> oh no, Papyrus said, raising a hand to his mouth. My vial of peppermint is shot that I. Keep on my person <laughs> at all times for secret reasons. It must have fallen out of my pocket unintentionally. Pet Dugger Pet Duggerisa wine. Peppermint Dugger and me covered his mouth, vainly trying to keep the scent out of his nose. I heard blood shutting down too much minty Sans found. Well that's bad luck, he said. How long until you can smell again? It'll be weeks until we are fully recovered. Dog and me said, rubbing temples and giving Papyrus' stink eye. Sorry, Papyrus fought to keep a straight face. Disaster successfully averted. He refused to feel guilty for saving their lives, even if the pair had a nasty headache for a while. Headaches got better. Death, not so much. Hey, San said, don't worry about it. Why do I say I treat you both with some peanut butter sammies for your trouble? What's the point? Dogarisa grumbled as they all started back down the hill side. It's just gonna taste like peppermint. Papyrus looked down at what was apparently his meal. Sans. Oh. Sans. When I use. When you said you were going to take care of dinner, I didn't expect this. He looked across the table at his brother. I don't know why I didn't expect it, of course. Who's Sans? Just call me, Sans said with a flourish. Peanut Butter Jones. You could have just let me cook. Papyrus took a bite of a sandwich. Not even peanut butter and jelly, just peanut butter. No plate, either. Sans shrugged, start staring into his san sandwich with more enthusiasm. Nah, bro, it's my turn. I mean, he said, I think I think it was my turn about a hundred turns ago. But I'm so lazy, so Papyrus frowned. Sans, I, bro, Sans said, it's fine, just forget it. I know I'm hard to live with. He opened and closed his mouth a couple of times, looking pen pensive. Huh. I think I'm remembering why I don't eat this stuff more often. The problem with peanut butter for a skeleton was that it got stuck up to the roof of the mouth like normal, but being without a tongue made it extremely difficult to dislodge. Papyrus was having the same trouble. Sans sighed. Well, that's what we get for letting me cook. We'll let that be a lesson to you. Papyrus winced hard. Y y you okay? Yes, of course. Papyrus said a bit too quickly. Just the peanut butter is driving me crazy. That, at least, wasn't a lie. It was like a mouthful mouthful of glue. Who wouldn't budge? Just dig, it, just dig it out of there with your finger, bro. That's what I'm doing. Papyrus said. I can see that. Not that he cared to. Disgusting. Fine. Leave it to his brother to mangle the basic tense of dining etiquette at any and every opportunity. It was nice to get the peanut butter unstuck, though. 
Ud would have um, the dogs, he said, around his finger. Ud, Papaya stuck his finger out of his mouth and tried again. What? I said, you should have seen the dogs, Sans said, hopefully done digging around in his mouth for the rest of the conversation. They were licking their chops for a good 30 minutes after they finished their sandwiches. Hilarious. They took you up on the, your offer? Yeah, you're lucky I smoothed things over. Sans leaned back in his chair, lacing his fingers behind his head. They were pretty peeved at you. Their eyesight isn't very good. You really did a number on them, knocking out their smellers like that. Papyrus did his best to look appropriately resourceful. That is unfortunate. I'll have to find some way to make amends for my clumsiness. Sans grin slipped. Why'd you do it? I just told you, Papyrus said, avoiding Sans's eyes. He never noticed before now, but Sans was incredibly good at staring. It fell out of my pocket in a moment of clumsiness. <laughs> Sans said, packing an essay of meaning into one syllable. And since when do you carry around peppermint oil around with you anyway? Peppermint extract, Papyrus corrected. And, uh, he was firing for a lie that was even remotely believable. Just in case I found myself in a situation in which a kiss seemed intimate, it's brutal to be prepared for eventualities like that. That was a thing that could have been true, right? And off and on the off chance someone wanted to kiss him, he was out and about, they had bad breath, he could offer them a peppermint first. The logic was sound. Sans clearly wasn't buying it. That's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard in a while, he said. Papyrus didn't want to start fighting again, so it was tiring. He could. It, this was so tiring, he couldn't bear it. Oh, all right, he said, shoulders slipping into feet. I used the pe peppermint bomb on purpose, so I confess. Why? Because, Papyrus said, because the tr truth is, he paused and caught up against moral crossroads. He gathered himself and forged ahead. Th the truth is, I'm the one who tore up that hill. I've been practicing there because it's out of the way and I don't need to worry about breaking anything. Sand sat back in his chair, deflating a bit. Is that true? Papyrus nodded. It wasn't a lie, exactly. I wanted to keep it a secret. I know how those kids are. I'd have to find another spot if they found out where I was there. So, what you're telling me, Sans said, leaning his elbows on the table, is that when you're saying you're doing a night patrol, you're actually wandering out into the woods to goof around with your magic? I'm not goofing around, Sans. Papyrus at least didn't have to fake offense. Sans grinned, crept back into place. My brother is slacking off of work. I'm doing no such thing! Bro, I've never been so proud of you, Sans said, wiping a non-existent tears from his eye sockets. I want to shout it off the rooftops. You better not! And this is just the beginning, Sans winked. If you want, I can show you all the prime napping spots. You just say the word, he said, with a grand sleeping gesture, and I can show you a whole new world of un underachievement. Papyrus crossed his arms, doing his best to look cheesed off. Seeing Sans back to normal had evaporated any irritation he would normally be feeling at the impl at the implication that he was in any way lazy. I don't have to sit here and listen to this sander. slander. Seriously, Sans said, pushing away from the table. This might be the best day of my life, not even exaggerating. He gathered their abandoned sandwiches and dumped them in the trash. It was the first time Papyrus had seen him throw, an throw something away on his own in over a week. Papyrus, he was, should, he's supposed to, he supposed he should be happy about that, along with the attempt at making food. Instead, Papyrus found himself trying to suss out why Sans was acting so unnaturally functional. Either, either he was still stinging from Papyrus's rant yesterday, which was bad, or Papyrus was showing enough strain that Sans felt moved to try and take care of himself, which was clearly, which was equally dire. Hey, Sans said. Less the dog's on duty tonight, right? He shuffled across the living room to rummage around under the TV stand in what, for him, counted as flurry, counted as a flurry of activity. Yes, I believe so. Well, if you don't have anything else going on, my contact at the dump came through with this, Sans said, coming up with the huge car magazine. The cover was wavy from a long, dried spill. Car and driver, July 2009. Nice, huh? He tapped the, he tapped the cover with a figure. I'm really hoping this is just coffee or soda or something. 
Garbage juice was never quite that being, but faint, but faint heart never scored neat stuff. Besides, that was one good reason Papyrus left actual, left the actual reading part to Sands, aside from necessity. Only a few years old, Papyrus conceded, one of the better publications too, in his opinion. Sands teased the stuck together pages apart. I haven't had the chance to read it, so I don't know if it's going to be any good, but we could go through it if you want. Come to think of it, they had fallen out of their normal routine, hadn't they? Normally it would be Papyrus pestering Sands about reading to him. He was fascinated by cars. He couldn't really read about them himself. Books he could mostly deal with, but the text magazines were so small, and it was usually faded and stained, too. And the print was like, And the print wasn't like a computer screen, where he could resize the text and mess with the font to find something he could manage. About after ten minutes with one of the human magazines, all the words swimming around the letters switching places left him with a headache. Truth be told, Papyrus couldn't really judge up much excitement about only slightly absolute automotive discourse. Technically, reading about cars had always been pointless. He'd never really seen one for real, much less get to drive one himself. Until recently, he had gotten a lot of joy out of learning about them. Daydreams were as important as oxygen to most of the monsters in the underground, but lately he'd lost access to his dreams. If there was anything close enough to lean on, Sands would have been leaning on it. The way he was peering over the top of the magazine, his eyes glowing a little unevenly, betrayed exactly how nonchalant he was, which was not very. Okay, Papyrus said. What else could he say? Their couch was not comfortable. It was lumpy and there was a broken spring that always wound up digging into Papyrus' pelvis no matter how he sat. If Sands was uncomfortable, he didn't show it. He tossed himself onto one end, the dreadful Davenport with creak of springs. It took Papyrus a couple of minutes to fidget around to a, for a passable confrontation. He settled for a sort sprawling across the remaining cushions. Maybe if he'd spread himself out enough, the spring wouldn't- nope, there it was. He sighed, defeated. Without knowing when the next one would turn up, they couldn't really be choosy about what they read and what they skipped over. They'd gotten into the habit of reading each magazine metallic- met methodically covered to cover. As Sands moved from letter- from the letter to- from- from the letter from the editor to the reader's letters and the responses, to the first of the editorials, Papyrus started to relax. Normally, he would be thoroughly engrossed in the articles, or wondering about what the humans who had written them were doing now, and what kind of people they were, and whether they were nice. He still can recapture the spark of interest, but right now it was just enough to bask in how ordinary it all felt. The light from the lamp, the lumpy but familiar couch, the sound of his brother's voice as he read out the fuel injection systems, or slightly disappointing sport copes, it felt normal, just right and safe. He realized sleepily that this was his new daydream. Just this. It didn't really have this anymore, but it was nice, right now, to pretend. Papyrus didn't know when he dozed off, but when he woke up, the clock on the wall read two in the morning, too early to get up. The magazine had slipped from Sansa's hands to the floor as he snored softly, head resting on his collarbone. Papyrus grabbed the afghan from the back of the couch and draped it over him. He got up and turned off, turned the lights off, eyeing the stars, eyeing the stairs in the dim, colorful light from the fairy lights outside. A few, a few of the steps were creaky. He could never remember which ones. He didn't want to wake his brother. He also didn't really want to be alone, so he returned to the couch, curled up on the lumpy cushions, and covered himself with a corner of the afghan and went back to sleep.